This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Welcome to Swinging Through Comics. Visit mjmunoz.com slash STC for notes and links. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment to help me grow. So I'm ready to talk about WandaVision Episode 4. And I have to say, uh, I liked a lot. The episode was entitled, And Now We Interrupt This Program, or something like that. Anyway, uh, it was very interesting. The perspective shifts from within the TV show that is WandaVision, and I was expecting, uh, I was expecting, oh, you know, here's going to come up the, uh, the song here, here, and then we never went into the show. So that was kind of interesting. But um, I really liked the episode. I, I feel like I don't have much to say. I usually say that and then I talk for 30 minutes, but today I really don't have time. So I really think I will keep this, uh, you know, five minutes or so. It was really good. It was really interesting. I really liked the uh, shift in perspective. The fact that we're sitting here with the you know, spoilers, I guess. You should have watched this if you're uh, over here for the analysis. We're here with Monica Rambeau and Jimmy Woo, the FBI agent from, uh, I don't know if it's one or, or both Ant-Man movies, but I know he was an Ant-Man too for sure. Anyway, um, so, you know, we're here with, with this couple of people and they're over in Westview, New Jersey because uh, there's a missing persons case or whatever that Wu gets pulled in on. Um, but really what, what was more interesting or more impactful was that in the beginning of the episode, we got to see Monica Rambeau getting uh, unblipped, unsnapped, whatever. Um, I guess I, I couldn't remember if, if uh, I guess blip is the official term within the MCU, even though MCU, you know, watchers call it snapped. But regardless, uh, we see her getting unblipped, which was crazy. Um, you know, the effect, it was probably just the effect in reverse, but it, it looks really neat. And uh, the situation that she found herself in, the chaos that was going on as everybody was getting blipped back into reality five years later, uh, was really impressive. And I liked it a lot. Uh, there was a, there was something really great about that opening scene in the hospital that was uh, very intriguing. It had a, a really great draw to it. And gosh, I don't know uh, what more to say. I'm trying to think, well, anyway, it was really well done. Uh, I was ex also expecting the whole episode for it to snap back into the uh, you know smaller aspect ratio, the four by three or whatever the old television shows were. Um, you know, but it stayed you know outside of, of the world within you know Westview, um, and that was really neat. Uh, I, I loved all the perspective we got to see you know Sword setting up their operation, bringing all these analysts. You had uh, Lewis. I guess that's her, her last name, Dr. Lewis, whatever, uh, come in from the Thor movies. That was cool to see her. I always liked her in those movies, but it was neat to see her in a, a different role and uh, not being, you know, the second fiddle comedic uh, effect person. Um, she still got to be snarky, which, you know, is not isn't good. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's enjoyable, sometimes it's a little too much. But uh, overall, I enjoyed her performance. Uh, like I said, her and Wu uh, together, and then Wu and Rambo together, it was good chemistry from these two different, you know, pairings um, who are you know, dealing with this thing, trying to get it all figured out. There's even dumb stuff like he does a like, card trick, uh, like to pop out his card, you know, because he was all impressed by Scott's, you know, up close magic stuff um, that that's carried over. So it, what I, I just loved how the whole thing was executed. I like how it um, made explanations for stuff and it's, we're seeing this other perspective. It kind of reminds me of like in Back to the Future 2 or maybe three or maybe both of them. No, it's, I think it's mostly two where you get to see Marty, you know, in the past twice and he's seeing his past self interacting there, but you know, he's on the other side of things or, uh, it's things from a slightly different perspective, like that toy that Wanda found. I always wondered what that was. We got to see what that was in this episode. Uh, the fact that it was colored as well. Uh, and then how it kind of shift things, uh, or cause things to shift was interesting. Uh, the fact that they said that, uh, the signal that they're picking up on, you know, of the broadcasts, uh, that they're picking picking up is uh, being censored was super interesting. The fact that they said it's part of like the background radiation of uh, like of the universe or whatever and that possibly it's been there since uh, you know the Big Bang or whatnot was really intriguing and it um, you know someone kind of deadpan asked the question you're telling me the universe made a sitcom like you know why would that happen and I wonder how deep and how far they're gonna go with this at the end we had 
uh, Monica Rambo after she was uh, shot out of uh, Westview uh, say uh, in a very shocked way it's all Wanda and I mean it certainly looks that way but I still wonder if there's somebody manipulating her and causing this all to happen uh, but maybe it's not and I do like the idea that I had floated in a previous analysis that it's just her in her hurt and in her grief not being able to deal with things that she's fabricated this this world and I don't know about any other you know plots about babies and why uh, you know how other some some other malevolent force would use those or whatever I think that it's fun and interesting and if those turn out to be true that's neat uh, but I still think a lot of it is you know is Wanda and it's stemming from her uh, being in such a state and uh, Somebody mentioned, oh, Lewis mentioned, uh, like, hey, uh, Vision is dead, right? Even though, you know, things had been unblipped. So, I don't know. I can't remember. I'm trying to think about the two movies. I guess there was a time jump because the Infinity Stone got ripped out of Vision's head. And that's when Thanos was able to do his snap. And then not until five years later did, uh, did it get dealt with um, in Endgame. So, you know, that's when they made everything right, except... Vision didn't get brought back to life. It was just people who had been snapped or blipped or whatever got unblipped. So uh, I guess that would mean that uh, she was without him for five years. And I, I think if I remember correctly, they couldn't find Wanda for Endgame. But I, I don't really remember 100%. Um, it's just me you know, being fuzzy on it because I haven't watched everything all recently to be able to say you know, definitively what happened. And uh, yeah, so... I don't know what's going on with that, and maybe that's something I should have brushed up on before, but, you know, I'm, uh, I'm representing the casual uh, audience member coming into this, and yeah, there's nothing special I remember about, you know, her being available or not, or that, you know, makes me, uh, you know, not okay with the premise of this. So, um, yeah, maybe she was just gone for a while, but, so maybe there is a malevolent actor who's um, gone and, uh, you know, made things worse for her. And I just don't know about them uh, or have the tightest context on things because of, you know, uh, not being 100% up to everything as much as I possibly could be with the MCU. Uh, but still, uh, regardless of my shortcomings um, as a fan, uh, it was still all really well executed and really good stuff. I'm excited to know more about S.W.O.R.D. Um, I almost want to go back and watch Captain Marvel now. Uh, just to get exposure to uh, Monica's mother. Uh, I see she's nicknamed as Photon. Um, I know a little bit about the extra history of, of uh, you know, Monica Rambeau and, uh, and Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel or whatever. And uh, I don't know enough to be definitive about anything, but I've, uh, I've heard some stuff. So it's kind of interesting that she was Photon. Uh, I don't know if that's just a nickname that she had uh, from Air Force stuff or, or how that came about, but she uh, definitely, I, I would assume after the events of Captain Marvel, got involved with uh, trying to cover uh, her girl's back as she's out doing uh, you know, Captain Marvel stuff in space. Um, and maybe that's how she got you know the clout or the initiative or uh, the, the impetus to start S.W.O.R.D. up. And uh, I thought it was cool, another cool detail that they, <laughs> the director told Monica that because she'd been missing for uh, a period of time, anybody who's been, any agent who's been missing for more than three weeks gets grounded and there's a protocol that they follow where they're kind of not trusted and I bet that's because they could be a, uh, a um, oh gosh, a scroll or something like that and they would want to have time to weed out and make sure that they're not, you know, bad or, you know, who, who knows, maybe they even knew about Hydra or didn't know about Hydra, but their protocols guard against stuff like Hydra. And I mean more that, um, shield was Hydra because that's what it was, right? It turned out to be the case anyway. So, uh, I, I really dug that, like that little, uh, lore bit that I think is in there. And even if not, even if it's not for scroll stuff, it's still just an interesting concept. Like, Oh, why would they do that? It, it kind of, it's a, a piece of information drop that makes you ask more questions. So, um, I also liked seeing the like real perspective with Wanda and Vision, and I liked how it stayed in the nine by sixteen aspect ratio when we went into the TV again, and or really we got to see behind the scenes stuff that was being censored. I wonder who's censoring it out. Is it sort of Wanda censoring it as she's refusing certain realities and replaying them? 
it was weird the way we saw and didn't see things. Some stuff was skipped over, and like they, uh, the people in the show outside of there uh, at the sword uh, fob, um, forward operating base, uh, they saw less of the WandaVision show than we did potentially. But then again, it's very possible that because we weren't, you know, seeing everything they saw 100%, maybe there's certain things that we haven't seen that they have seen. And I love the show within a show um, aspect of it, and it's really neat. And uh, I, know I, I really felt, I don't know if I said this before, I really felt like I was along with them investigating, and it was cool getting to piece together all the information as they learned more and, uh, you know, gave more to, to us, the audience. Um, and I really dug that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it right there. And, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and call it there, right there. I don't really have anything else constructive to say i'm super excited for episode four or five rather and i'm hoping it gets back into the other you know just within the show and it might be interesting for them to go one or two more episodes in the wandavision show and then pull back out and give us uh some more context with sword and what they're doing um yeah but yeah i, I mean the show just keeps getting better so <laughs> this is really enjoyable uh i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here uh, you can check it at mjmunos.com slash STC for the notes and links and everything. And that's about it. Um, yeah, that's all I want to share with you right now. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff going on, uh, there. Uh, if you, if you go, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I, that's enough self-promoting. So go there, uh, check out the stuff, follow along. Uh, I actually looked recently cause I added an, a new podcast, um, to my repertoire, uh, and I had to throw a bunch of stuff up as like a kind of a new category. And I noticed that I have a decent amount of uh, people over on the audio, even though uh, most people don't look at the, the video stuff I do. Uh, I am planning on posting all my stuff to Odyssey just because I don't want to have to be censored. I don't want to have to worry about things like that. And it's a, like a supposedly a very robust archive of all your stuff. I don't have the, the room to have, you know, tens of gigs or whatever of videos uh, laying around. Um, so anyway, don't worry about that, but Odyssey library, whatever, I'm going to have my, all my stuff over there as well, um, for you to check out. And, uh, I'm going to try to keep tabs on everything. I got to pull a bunch of stuff down from, uh, archive.org audio only stuff that I had there and, uh, bump it up over to, uh, to library probably. The only problem is I can't use it as a CDN, uh, like I can archive. So, uh, anyway, I, I'm getting too technical. I should have let you go a minute or two ago. So, uh, goodbye. <laughs>